So now I'm breaking down the speech I gave at a uh, tournament I went to. So the debate was about needle exchange programs and safe drug injection sites. And the debate can kind of become the same thing of the effectiveness of these injection sites or the need for public health initiatives, especially because that was um, a PLD debate topic at the time. But I took it to a different extreme. So I was a negation speech. How I opened my speech up was I began to talk about the American life that everyone envisions. When I say America, what do you think of? A white picket fence, a family of five, maybe a dog, maybe green grass. But what you don't think of is black markets and gang violence and crime. So in that introduction, what I did is I set up my contentions, kind of like what Luce Talisky did in his speech, because my two contentions were black markets will expand with this and war zones will expand because of this. So I continue into my first contention, which is black markets will be created because of these injection sites. So I use a statistic from NPR in January of 2015 that found that uh, people will actually pick up these needles they find on the ground and bring them to the um, safe, like the injection like exchange program. And because of this, a black market emerges where people will find needles and exchange them and then get money for or get new needles and then exchange those out. So instead of a legal system, because that's what the affirmation tries to set up, an, a legal system would be created. And I go, well, no, an actual not a legal system would be created. So I pretty much broke down the affirmation's main contention, which is like safety and the government control. And I said, no, we're going to lose control of this. And this also was very unique. In the round, this was not really being talked about, so I brought up a completely new contention and one that's kind of a more fear-mongering contention, more of a strong impact, so people can be scared about what I'm saying. Then in my second contention, I brought up a war zone will be created. And the term war zone I actually got from an NPR article from someone who a city council member who lived in a uh, needle exchange program, safe drug injection site area, where people would pretty much flock to these areas who were drug addicts. And so I was able to actually pull in like a stronger impact, war zones and black markets. They're very strong words, but they were actually words that were cited in my data. So it was less of an extreme and more of here's like actually the data. So I got my judges feedback from this one. Um, the judges like, I, the judges liked it. They did think my word choice was extreme, but since I had the words in my actual articles, it was less of an extreme, and it was a unique like speech in the round. So when you're giving a speech, make sure to give unique points. Now, I want to say, those opinions I gave in my speech were not necessarily my real opinions or my fake opinions. I don't... Congress is not about, like, what you really believe in. It's more about making the arguments out of the speech you're given. That's what your job is as a Congress member. So I like to put my personal opinions about Congress at the door. I want to make the best speech possible and look at the bill and the validity of the bill and not my own personal opinions because that's boring. So everyone take this as you will. I don't want everyone to give the same speech. So if you see my speech or see Luke Talisky's, don't give the exact same speech. Spice it up. Give your own spin to it. That's what makes speeches really good. But those central themes about how to give the speech and how to refute you should take with you to give to your speech and hopefully you can win. Good luck and I'll see you later. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and today centers we must take that first step in ensuring that we're able to make sure that we're protecting the lives of our civilians and make sure we're protecting the globe for our future. So today, because I stand with the sentiment that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, you will affirm this legislation and implement a carbon tax for the better of America because number one, it is the best plan despite what fellow senators have said, and number two, because of this, the economic benefits that this will have. But first, let's look to why this is the best plan. And this is shown in a study of 24 countries done by the University of British Columbia. They found in every single one of the countries that they studied that implemented a carbon tax, they saw a decrease in the number of carbon emissions. Emissions. So we see is this is actually going to have a positive effect and we see that the carbon emissions actually does go down. So despite what other senators today tell you, this actually has been proven to work. But let's look at what cost and why this is going to be the best solution to today's debate. It's because according to the Rice University, energy costs will only rise by 8% from now until 2030. And so what this means is that energy prices will not rise, but let's, let me tell you the exact effect in today's debate. And this is because according to the Food and Agriculture of, uh, Organization of the United Nations, fishery and farming are the most vulnerable areas to climate change. 
and today, Senators, we can battle the effects of climate change, protect millions of jobs and million dollars of industry, and ensure, and at the same time, ensuring that our most vulnerable Americans, those lower income Americans, are not burdened by the high cost. So today, Senator Fair, when you say that there are alternatives, Senator, I have shown you that this is number one, the cheapest solution, but number two, the solution that will make sure that's proven to work. And so today, we can have other alternatives. This is not the end all be all, but my solution is proven to work and will not hurt our lowest unemployed. But let's also look to the economy. Let me just show you the biggest argument in today's debate when it comes to the economy. Uh, when Sweden implemented their carbon tax, they saw a 75% increase in their GDP. So today, when you're looking at the impacts in today's debate, look at a 75% increase and what that can do to our economy. But let's also look to what, what happened in Canada, especially, especially Ottawa, Canada, when they did this. When they implemented the carbon tax, which will happen in this bill, they gave direct cash rebates to citizens. And what this means is that we're not actually taking a tax. I hate the word tax in this debate because it's not a tax. Instead, what this is, is this is a direct money backed in the hands of the citizens to make sure that the citizens get the money. So today, Senator Fair, when you say we need to solve the solution for the long run, that's true. But I've shown you that this will make sure to protect our economy, cushion our economy, when we bring that long-term solution back, back because you yourself agree that the cost will be astronomical when you're in this today's debate. So today, when you're voting, at the core of today's debate, it comes down to two things. It comes down to what solution will protect our lowest income Americans, and number two, what solution will make sure that we're overall having the best benefit on our economy. And today, I have shown you that this solution will be the best solution. And so today's debate, senators, let's take that first step. Take that first step with me and vote in the affirmation of this legislation.